worship the El Shaddai, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Blessed be your name. Ancient of days, we bow before you and worship your majesty this morning. We exalt the one who rises upon the wings of the wind, who made the heavens his throne, the earth is to stool. The God that has no comparison, most high, Lord of hosts. Ancient of days, the one whose throne has been of old, blessed be your name. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your reign is for all eternity. We bow before you, Father. We honor you. We adore you. We give thanks and praises to your holy name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, for a million tongues to give praise to you. It won't be enough. That we are so grateful for all you've been, all you've done, and what you are up to in our lives. Blessed be your name. Father, as we come into your word this morning, we pray that the word will come by the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven. Grant your trance, grant your people the door of faith. Please, Father, by your aspiration, glorify your word in every life and be admired in us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, choir. Hallelujah. December means many things, and it's very important that we are sensitive to the time it is. December, by virtue of the fact that we have set in Christendom the time of the celebration of the birth of Jesus which is the greatest event in history of humanity, the birth of Jesus. So it makes December a season of celebration. Also, December is transition from an outgoing year into a new year. And transition is should be a time of sober reflection. So how do you maintain the balance? Celebration, sober reflection. And maintaining that balance is very crucial. It's very crucial. And that's why I try to see how to help you to maintain that balance so you don't get lost in celebration. And then you enter the new year and you are staggering. You are waiting like some people I know who after six months, one year of taking the biggest position in their country they still don't know what they want to do and where, and where they are going. And then the whole four and subsequently eight years was a disaster for their nation. Next year will not be a disaster for you in Jesus' name. As I sat there, the Spirit of God spoke to me, and I wasn't thinking on anything. I wasn't in the, uh, programming anything in my mind. I was just worshiping. And the Lord said to me in my spirit, you are about to enter to the most glorious year you have ever known. And that's it's very exciting to me, very exciting. I know when I hear from God. So it's going to be, you are about to enter into the most glorious year you have ever known. Can I hear somebody say, I receive that? Can you say with all of your sins, I receive that?
year 2024. Don't worry, the whole of December, I'll be preparing you for celebration and for the new year. God has told us it's going to be a year of great exploits. There will be personal exploits. There will be family exploits. There will be kingdom exploits. Every one of us must get ourselves ready. Remember that uh, prophecy, the fulfillment of prophecy, has at least two dimensions to it. God's dimension and the human dimension. If God says, I'm going to bless the work of your hand, and then you decide to be lazy and stay at home, you don't go to work. Will the work be blessed? The work that you have not done will not be blessed. So if God says, I'm going to bless the work of your hand, it means you must get up and go to work. And work. And then God will have something to bless. So there is the God dimension, which I always call God's ability, and there is the human dimension, which I always call human responsibility. So the fulfillment of prophecy always requires God's ability and human responsibility. God said to Eli, the priest too shall not depart from your family. And then Eli did not raise up his sons well. God said, I repent. I changed my mind. And he took the priesthood away. So there is need for us, beloved brethren, as we stand at the threshold of a new year, and as we also enter into a season of celebrating Jesus Christ, that in celebration we must not also forget why this Jesus came and getting ourselves ready to see that the purpose of his coming is not in vain in our lives. So this morning, I'm beginning to prepare you. God in year 2024 is calling us to a higher height. Can I hear somebody say, I'm going higher? I will not be in this level. Tell somebody close to you, look at me. This is the last time you will see me at this level. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 to 11 quickly. I want to bring something out. Revelation 4, 1 to 11. After this, I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. Hallelujah. God has already opened a door in heaven. Everything that we have here, everything we do here, they come from heaven. And when God has opened the door for you, heaven doors will open on earth. I didn't hear a good amen. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. We said, come up here, say I'm going higher. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Things that are coming in the year ahead. Fantastic, glorious things that are coming. The door is already open in heaven. And I know the door will open on earth. Hallelujah. Because... Whatsoever is permitted on earth, will be, I mean, whatsoever is permitted in heaven will be permitted on earth. Whatever we lose on earth, sorry, whatever we permit on earth shall be permitted in heaven. Whatever we disallow on earth will be disallowed in heaven. When you have known what the plan and purpose of heaven is, please allow it on earth. Are you with me? Agree with heaven, begin to declare it, begin to believe it, begin to pray it, begin to speak it. Hallelujah. I said there is open door in heaven. Say I receive open door on earth. He said, 
I heard this voice, it was like a trumpet. That is, it's a voice that is unmistakable. It's loud and clear. Hallelujah. And that voice said to me, come up hither. Say, I'm going higher. He said, I will show you things that must be hereafter. There are certain things that must be beyond today, beyond this year. God has new and great things he wants to do. And you see, God wants to show them to you. And uh, the purpose why God shows them to you ahead of time is to prepare you. Because it takes faith to have sex, to have access to whatever God has said. Without, without faith, it's impossible to please him. They that will come to God must believe. So he tells you ahead for the preparation of your faith. Verse 2, and immediately I was in the spirit. It's so important that we are in the spirit. Because the spirit and the spirituality did the natural. If you are not in the spirit, then you will know not be in the realm from where all the things that are to happen here is brought forth. In order to see and in order to be able to acquire those things that God wanted to show, he had to be in the spirit. So as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, as we rejoice and whatever we do, be in the spirit and one way to keep yourself in the spirit is to pray in the spirit a lot pray in the spirit a lot i've taught you separately seize every moment those driving moment those walking moment those times you are doing house call and you are alone, pray in the spirit. I want us to develop a culture in this house. Let's pray in the spirit so much that becomes your lifestyle. It becomes your lifestyle. I love some of the things that are happening to me these days. Even when I'm sleeping, I'm singing in the spirit. I'm praying and singing in the spirit. I wake up singing songs to God. It's like internally, I'm always singing or praying. I want us to develop that kind of culture that every moment, boom, you connect, you, you connect to the spirit. He said I was in the spirit. So if you, if you want to know the things that are to happen, you want to go to that higher ground, the pathway is to be in the spirit. Be spiritually conscious. Be spiritually conscious. A lot of Christians are still very carnal. They are still so tied to this realm. Everything about their lives is about what is happening in this realm. Their mood. Their mood at any time is dictated by what is happening at this time in this realm. Their joy is affected by what is happening in this realm. Their hope is determined by what is happening in this realm. Their lifestyle is all about what is happening in this realm. It's time we go higher. And we're going to go higher in Jesus' name. He said, I was in the spirit. And because he was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. 
he saw the throne in heaven and the one who sits on the throne ladies and gentlemen there is a king the king of kings and the lord of lord who sits on the throne he still governs and controls the affairs of the world and the good news is he loves you he controls the affairs of your life say god controls my life and that eliminates every fear when someone who loves you controls your life it eliminates every fear hallelujah when someone who loves you controls your life it eliminates every fear so don't be afraid of your tomorrow don't be afraid of your 2024 he controls it and somebody may say how will 2024 be my greatest year with all the problems and challenges I'm having right now. It doesn't have to do with your circumstance now. It has to do with who controls it all. Say God controls my life. So focus on him. Focus on God. Be in the spirit. See the one who sits on the throne. Verse 3, and he sat, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper, a silent stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their head crowns of gold. Hallelujah. May you obtain your own crown one day. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and ran about the throne, we are four beasts full of eyes before and behind. God was showing him the glory and the majesty and the power of heaven. God was showing him the majesty of God so that he can be assured, so that his faith can be made strong. He who controls our destinies is the all-powerful, all-glorious, all-knowing, is the Adonai, the Lord and Master who rules over all and controls all. Almost every day of my life, in my prayer, when I come to the point of worshiping God by His name, Adonai, such peace, such joy comes into my heart. Say, God, you are the Lord and Master. The all-controlling God, I'm glad to know you control my life and destiny. It gives you such peace. It doesn't matter what is happening. He who controls my life is above and greater than those things. I don't fear those challenges. Challenges come. My wife is here. She knows I'm a very peaceful person. No matter what is rocking, I'm at peace. He controls it all. Live your life in peace. All right? No matter the challenges. Challenges are meant to come and go. They will come, they will go. Especially when you allow God in those challenges. When you trust him. When you exercise faith in him. 
God wanted to take him to a, a new height, to a new level. God was achieving those things by opening his eyes to see the heavenly realm. God wanted him to see the power of heaven and the possibility what heaven can make happen so that his faith will move to a higher ground and so that what will happen for him will also go high. Brethren, where you are now is not your destination. It's not your destiny. Thank God for all God has done for us these years and we must continue to be grateful. No matter how little you think yours is, be grateful. We're talking about gratitude. Was it last week? And I've seen some of you practicing. Thank you. I've received notes of gratitude from some individuals. And I love it when I see people hear the word and take action. God loves it, and that's what produces. Where you are now, I said, is not your destination. There is a higher ground. And God is giving us invitation by this message you are hearing today to come up to another level. Say, I'm going higher. Respond to God, say, I'm coming up higher. There is a higher place for each of us in God. And particularly in year 2024. Every one of you hearing me and receiving me as a prophet of God, it is absolutely impossible for you to remain in the same level or to go lower. It's absolutely impossible. You are going higher. I don't care the height you have attained to now. That is not the end of where God is taking you to. You are going higher in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Say, come up higher. Thank God for all he has done. The heights he has brought you to. There is still, the journey is still far. There are still higher heights. The sky, like somebody says, is not your limit. God is. Amen. It's calling out. In fact, the level God has set for us is his level. After all, he created us in his image and in his likeness. He created us so that we can have his nature and function like he functions. When you have God's nature and you function like God's functions, then you are in his class. He called us. He created us so we can be in his class. Have his nature. Function like God functions. Now, we cannot begin to brag and say I'm God. That's not what I'm saying. But we are his children. Children don't brag at their fathers. Right? They honor and respect their fathers even though they have come of age. They are now at the same rank. In fact, they could be more successful. I think my son is more educated than I am. He sees better English. But he cannot disrespect me. <laughs> I will show you I'm still his father. <laughs> so we still honor and respect God and bow and worship God our Father. But he called us to be at this level. To function like him. To have his nature. Children must respect their parents. must uh, resemble their parents. Hallelujah. Not necessarily physically. You see some children, you hear their voice, you think it's their mother or their father. They walk like their father. They behave like their father. Praise God. Sometimes when I look at my son, I just say, ah, that's you. <laughs> when I see some things I don't like too much, and I want to feel like, come 
oh, what's wrong with you, boy? And then I would say, that's you. <laughs> then I would come down. <laughs> Glory to God. God wanted to change John's perception. That was why he was showing him the kind of glory and level he had never seen. This month is a month also to pray, Lord, to be sober, pray in the spirit, because God will show you new things, new heights, things you have never known before, because your perception will determine your reception. What you perceive will determine what you are going to receive. So if nothing, if you don't catch any revelation, you are not going anywhere. You must catch some revelation. And that's why we have put together a number of programs like the Insight Summit. The Insight Summit is a time for you to receive prophetic insight into the year. Right? Because that's how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. When you hear what God is saying, or you are given the revelation of what God is saying, then it prepares your faith and it determines your reception. Your revelation determines your preparation and your reception. So the standard of your life is somehow predicted on the level of your revelation. God wanted him to see the glory that awaited him. Your perception determines your reception. You can't live your life by rot. Just live in a cycle. There is need at this time to set time aside to hear and see what God is saying to us. So that's part of what you must do this December. Yes, we have set time where we will meet corporately. But you must also set personal time. For instance, after you have received this message today, go back. Think about it. Set time to think about it. After God has spoken to us in the, in the, in the Insight Summit, take your notebook. Go over those things again and again and again. I wish every one of us would be like mommy. She will... She will hear it, hear it, hear it, read it, read it, read it, read it. That's how been our life, which is wonderful and commendable. Don't live your life by rot. Let's emulate Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, Habakkuk said, in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what it will say to me. Some people just go through this number, running all over there, beep, 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 buying stuff and doing all those things. And then the new year will just come, beep. no preparation, no insight, no expectation, nothing. And then the year becomes and then the year begins to run again as usual. Then suddenly the same has come. What have I done this year? Zero. What tangible thing have I achieved this year? Zero. And then they are angry at God. God, you didn't do anything for me. You didn't receive any insight. You didn't prepare yourself for God to do anything in your life or for you. So, we must all set time apart. All the things you hear concerning the year, especially in the inside summit, go over them again, think about them. Then ask 
Lord, how will this apply to me personally? You are going to promote me? How do I cooperate with your spirit to ensure that I have the promotion? This is going to be the best year of my life. So far, only the years ahead will be better. How do I cooperate with this prophetic word to ensure that what God said happens? These are the things. So the prophet said, I will set myself on my watch to see or to have perception. To have perception of what God will say to me. Hallelujah. And he said, I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer. That's what God is saying and how I will respond. What God is saying to me and what my actions and attitude will be. How I will answer. After God has spoken to you, you must answer. A lot of people don't answer. In fact, they forget. As soon as they come out of the inside of me, it's gone. The thing is finished. We are finished inside summit. <laughs> they, they continue in their usual way of life. No answer. Then you must answer after you have had God speak, spoken to you. One of the ways to answer is to pray. One of the ways to answer is to believe. One of the ways to answer is to take massive action. Everybody say massive action. Take action. Do something along the line of what God is saying to you. Glory to God. If you are hearing what I'm saying this morning, you can start your new year now. <laughs> you don't even have to wait. Start now. I perceive by that my year 2024 will start in year 2023. Glory to God. Because I begin to enter into the glory of that new year. This year. I will enter on the note of glory. I was telling them at Power Cathedral yesterday that the vehicle that would drive us into year 2024 is called glory. How many of you want to ride on glory? <laughs> we will ride gloriously, gloriously, gloriously into year 2024. And that same vehicle of glory will drive us through the year. And we are going to go from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Glory to glory. No shame. No insult. No embarrassment. No disgrace. We will ride on the wings of glory. Because our God is the king of glory. Hallelujah. God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15. Genesis 13, 14 to 15. And God is saying the same to you today. And the Lord said to Abraham, after Lord had separated from him, may God separate you from all those who can becloud your vision in Jesus' name. Say, so lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Because you are moving from that place. Say, I'm moving. This place is good, but it's not good now. I'm moving. There are better heights. Better things are waiting my life. Say, look from the place where you are. So where you are now doesn't matter. God said, look from there. Look northward, look southward, look eastward, look westward. For all the land that you will see, I give you. And your descendants forever. All the land that we see. So if you don't see anything, you have nothing to receive. 
If you don't see, we are not talking of physical sight now. We are talking of spiritual insight. If you don't gain any insight of the plan and purposes of God, then there is nothing to receive. It is what you see. May God grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. May God grant us grace to perceive what God has in store for us. Sin is receiving. We must see it. Your life is a product of what you see. It's a product of what you see. Every place you see, northward, southward, eastward, westward, I have given to you and your descendants forever. God desires that we are conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. He wants our lives to move from glory to glory. Hallelujah. And you must see yourself becoming like him. More and more, more and more. His character, his nature, his power, his glory. Second Corinthians 2, I mean Second Corinthians 3, 18. Where we are with unveiled face. May God give us unveiled face. Beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. First John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the children of God that has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, you see, revelation is very important. When he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The more you see him, the more you see his glory, the more you see his power, the more you see his character, the more you become like him. The more you see his victory, the more you see his riches, the more you acquire what he is. Proverbs 4, 18 says that the path of the just is like shining, is like this, the shining sun that shines ever brighter, ever brighter unto the perfect day. Your life must keep on moving forward and forward and forward until everything comes to perfection. Year 2024. Will be far greater and better and brighter than year 2023. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. So, take time to rejoice, take time to celebrate, take time to reflect, take time to pray, take time to seek the face of the Lord, take time to prophesy into those years, into that year. Before it ever happens, don't let it come to you suddenly. Join us at the Inside Summit. Join us at the Leaders Congress. Join me later this afternoon at Power Cathedral. You didn't come yesterday. You need to repent, every one of you. I invited you to Power Cathedral. You didn't come. Only the pastors came. All the blessings that has been declared will go to the pastors. Can I hear the pastors say amen? You see, they didn't say amen. They didn't like it. <laughs> but there is nothing they can do about it. <laughs> the blessings are already on you. Praise God. The blessings are already on the pastors. Hallelujah. Don't envy them. <laughs> Don't envy those pastors. When you begin to seek God, promote them in incredible ways. Do some strange and marvelous things in their lives in year 2024. Year 2024 is your year. I'm telling you, pastors, year 2024 is your year. People will be astonished. People will be surprised at the level of glory and grace and blessing that will come to your lives.
In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God will make you wonders to many. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy as we enter. I, I want you to believe that we have started entering. We have started the journey of year 2024. I'm going to spend every opportunity I have to begin to gradually take you into the year. By the time you hit January 1, you are already running. You are already, on, you are already running. You are already on your way. You already have a hold of the year. You are not staggering. And say, eh, I don't know what to do. You already know what to do. Because things are already taking shape. Things are already happening in your life. I prophesy. Somebody is rising from the mighty clay to the throne of glory. Somebody is rising from the pit to the throne of honor. Somebody is rising from the dung hill to the throne made of pure gold. You will go from grass to grace. Some people also will go from sinner to saints. People will go from prison to the palace. People will go from shame to fame. People will go from weakness to strength. People will go from doom to boom. From disaster to deliverance. From tragedy to triumph. Everyone from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. The window, is, the door is already open in heaven. God is calling us to come higher. That we must enter into the spirit. And the practical instruction I've given you, pray, Lord, in the spirit. Seize every moment to pray in the spirit. God gave us this Holy Spirit and its capacity to pray in tongues. It's not for play, play. It is the instrument to help us seize our, our destiny, take our, seize our future. When God hasn't given you a car, he has given you a person to, to be able to walk and spend time praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. You have more time to pray in the spirit when you are walking. Praise God. Instead of the money that the, hey, the brother passed me, didn't pick me, didn't need to pick you, you needed time to pray in the spirit. Even sometimes I pray in the spirit, and one brother also say thank you, sir. I'm praying. I mean, you have no time to be money and be envious and be jealous and be critical about anybody. You, you have a life to live, a destiny to fulfill. Seize every moment. Seize every moment. Pray in the spirit. You are doing the house call. Keep praying in the spirit. The husband didn't give you money. You bought the food yourself and you are cooking it yourself and you come and sit down and eat. Keep praying in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. What's the big deal if God is blessing you and you can feed everybody, your husband, your children, those who are not your children, other people's husband? What's the big deal? Feed them. Feed them. Take life simply. Don't complicate your life at all. No bitterness, no sorrow, no envy. Just... Be happy. Make life simple. Make life simple. Simplify your life. Help me tell somebody simplify your life. Any of us are complicating our lives and it's not necessary. You are going from glory to glory. Anytime God wants you to take you to a new level or do something new in your life, something must change.
your perception must change your mindset must change your attitude must change your mentality must change your thinking must change your believing must change your giving must change your serving must change sometimes you need to change your friends you know so that the right spiritual atmosphere can be around you you have to change people who always say things that discourage you you know people that make you look down on yourself people that say things that make you feel heavy look for people who say things that inspire you change your friends even if they are christians change them you will love them you come to church with them but when it comes to visiting and staying with them and listening to them you don't you don't need people who don't inspire you you need people who make the god inside you to become so big that you are prepared to take on any challenge let's rise on our feet and pray hallelujah glory to god i just want you to pray the spirit this morning i want i'm not going to dictate any prayer i want you to just begin to pray in the spirit let's begin the exercise just pray in the spirit you are going higher higher ground is awaiting you the most glorious year you have ever had get into the spirit if you cannot pray in tongues, come forward. You don't know how to pray in the Spirit. You don't know how to pray in tongues. You are not yet filled with the Holy Spirit. You cannot pray in tongues. Come forward, quickly. Come forward. And God will give you that ability right now. If you are here, you cannot pray in tongues. Come forward. We are going to minister to you and you are going to receive now. Anybody in the auditorium, two bane fede for two leg bad one in one me, move a go jadiwa. Le pro costa raga yet a reke secete, a reke secete. Pastor Raji, Pastor Yeshina. Can I have a lady? Where is Catherine? Okay, he's not here. All right. Oh, okay. Take them one by one. I minister to them, starting from Shake Up Salvation. Let I'm not seeing the people that are violently taking the year. Take the year. Take the year. Take it. Take it. Pray the spirit. Maroba Shake Liba Kataruba Shanta Lenga Raba Shakata. If you don't pray sufficiently, I will keep you here. I have the microphone. If you walk out, you walk out on God. Keep praying in the spirit. Pray strongly. Yagalabasha, I didn't know it's you. Yeke rebo shagalaba yeke tereke seke. Yagoloba yagalaba sheke leba kuria kasatala. You have started to invade the year. You have started to invade the year. Pray strongly. Mariba Sakuni Kaposeke Yeke Tukuti Kapokani Kesekete Bakbakata Koto Makato Koto Parakoto Parakata Shakuteke As you are praying in the spirit, you are arresting any situation that is contrary to what God has said. You are demobilizing every satanic force that is set to stop you. You are dismantling satanic capabilities to hinder you. Pray in the spirit. Pray in we give you praise in Jesus. Lord, this is our cry that you will prepare us. Let none be left behind in the days ahead. Father, continue to equip us. Grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your will for year 2024. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened to know what you are calling us to 
in year 2024. I pray that no one will miss you in the name of Jesus. Strengthen our faith. Lord, we dismantle every power of hell that may want to hinder us in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Let the weak ahead be glorious. Lord, cause us to swim in your goodness. Let your mercy reach out to each and every one and to every family. I decree divine preservation in the name of Jesus. I decree divine provision. I decree divine promotion in the name of Jesus. I decree divine protection in the name of Jesus. Anything that is hurting you now, whatever it is, I dismantle and destroy them in the name of Jesus. Shakote Kariba Sekete. We throw heaven's missile to destroy every satanic thing hurting your life in any way. In the name of Jesus, we dismantle them. We dismantle them. We dismantle them. We destroy them. We dismantle them. We destroy them. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing to everyone that is sick. We remove power from the from that disease in the name of Jesus. Makutu pau raba shabalasi shakalide raba shakalia. I decree healing and well-being. You will not do Christmas in sickness. You will do it in health and well-being. I command every symptom of sickness.